Welcome to the first video of this section, called Logistic Classification, another important subject in the supervised learning approach of machine learning. Recalling the previous section, we studied a key topic in machine learning, the gradient descent optimization method, and applied it to tackle linear and nonlinear regression problems. We'll start with a brief overview of logistic regression for classification and prediction. We'll end with implementing logistic regression for classification via SciPy functions. Moving on to the first video of this section, with an overview of logistic regression for classification and prediction. We're going to cover an overview of classification and cover a theoretical digression and cover a theoretical digression about logistic regression for classification and prediction. Previously, we studied regression problems on which we could describe the relationship between a response, between a response or dependent variable, and one or more features. The dependent variables takes continuous values and one or more features or independent variables. The dependent variables takes continuous values. Classification problems are those in which the variable to be predicted takes discrete values. There are common examples that you're familiar with. One is the case of knowing whether a credit card operation is fraudulent or not on the basis of a transaction history. Another case would be to predict the chance of a tumor to be malignant or benign. Another example is classifying emails into spam or non-spam. In these examples, the variable we want to learn could take the value of zero, characterizing the absence of the condition, or one characterizing presence of the condition. We'll restrict our attention to these sort of binary outcome cases. These ideas are readily expandable to a situation on which the outcome could take several discrete values. That's called multi-class classification problems. The logistic regression algorithm is one of the most widely used learning algorithms for tackling classification problems. In the case of the binary classification problem, which the outcome will take the values of 0 and 1, the standard approach is to think about the probability for those values to happen. In this case, a hypothesis h of theta of x is proposed according to which it represents such a probability, that is, h of theta x is greater than 0 or equal to 1, and h of theta of x takes the form shown here. s of x is the logistic sigmoid function, which you can read about on this web link. It represents the probability that the quantity represented by x, y equal to 1. The logistic sigmoid function is interpreted as the probability. It's not casual, as it's formally the cumulative distribution function of the logistic probability distribution function shown here. As in the case of a fair random walk in one dimension or the fair tossing of a coin, it can be assumed that the outcome y equals 1 happens when the hypothesis h of x is greater than or equal than 0.5 and y equals 0 otherwise. This interpretation leads to taking the argument of the hypothesis h of theta of x or theta transpose times the matrix x to be greater than or equal to 0 to predict y equals 1. While whenever it is less than 0, we're going to predict y equals 0. In other words, h of theta of x is equal to the probability of obtaining y equals 1. Given x in the parameter theta, 1 minus h of theta of x is equal to the probability of obtaining y equals 0. Given x and the parameter of theta, given x and the parameter theta, this interpretation sets the basis for the logistic regression algorithm. The case when the argument of the hypothesis h of x, or theta transpose times the matrix x, is equal to zero, defines what is called the decision boundary, separating regions of y equals zero from regions of y equals zero, separating regions of y equals one from regions of y equals zero. In the case of linear regression, it's necessary to define a procedure to find the optimal parameter theta to best fit our outcome from a set of i equals m observations of the form x underscore i1, x underscore i2, etc., x underscore in, y underscore i. In the case of the logistic regression we're considering, the problem reduces to minimizing the cost function j shown here. This j cost function can be obtained via maximum likelihood estimation, which you could read more at this web link. Great! 
The minimization process gives us the optimal parameters thetas by plugging an input vector x and the obtained thetas into the hypothesis h underscore theta of x. One way of minimizing the j cost function is using the gradient descent algorithm, which we've already implemented in the previous section in the context of linear regression. As we've seen in the examples given in that section, we need to use a proper choice of learning rate, of learning rate alpha, to get our implementation to converge to the minimizing values. The required gradient of the j cost function is shown here, which you can obtain by straightforward deri which you can obtain by straightforward derivative which you could obtain by straightforward derivation of j, theta, of j. We also let you code the gradient descent for this kind of problem. In the next video, we'll instead use scipy functions that we've already used in the previous section to perform the minimization of the j cost function and find the optimal thetas we're looking for. Using scipy functions will make our coding much faster. That way, you'll have more practice using the scipy functions for optimization. In this video, we've studied the basic aspects of logistic regression, and we posed the problem in terms of a minimization problem to find optimal parameter theta, which we can then make predictions.